Here's a really lovely problem regarding fluid pressure on a side. Okay, now fuel tank is in the form of a rectangular box. The tank is three foot wide, so I'm going to label my graph as I go. Three foot wide, five feet long, and four feet deep. That's how I interpret that. If the tank is filled with fuel weighing 60 pounds per cubic foot, Calculate the total force due to fluid pressure on one side of the tank. Include units. Now it's on the right side. I'm assuming either, you know, if, if I'm facing the box and I use my right hand, this is the right side right here, or this is the right side over here. Either way, it's the same shape. I'm pointing at the big side over here. Big side. Okay. So if I'm going to do the fuel fluid pressure on the right side, that means I'm trying to find the force, which is the pounds on that side. Now I'm given a density of 60 pounds per cubic feet. And if I think about that side, if I look straight, of course, let me roll this up a little bit here. If I look straight towards that side, Um, this is five feet down here, and this is four feet here, and I take my little slice. My slice um, is just an area, because again, if you're doing total force, you're measuring how much force when you push your finger or put some sort of pressure on a, a surface that is an area, a surface area. So that's the measurement of my slice. That's what I'm measuring because right along that surface area right there is where the density, uh, the pressure is approximately equal. So what that tells me is that I'm going to multiply times my area of my slice, which is just square feet. So, I mean, if I look at the units here, these are supposed to match the product of these is supposed to match this pounds. So it looks like I'm missing a, a, a foot measurement somewhere. But that also has to do with the depth because the reason why I'm slicing this way because it, the different depths determines whether or not the density or the pressure is equal along that slice. So I also have to multiply by the depth of that particular slice, which is feet. And then that product of all those units gives me pounds, which is what I want. So now I have to think about the area of my slice and it's just a long, thin rectangle whose width is five feet and whose thickness, well, if I describe H as being the depth, then the thickness is delta H. So length times width gives me the area of my slice. So that's what this is up here. Actually, I want to do sub S for slice here to distinguish it. So I have 60 times 5 times delta H. And then the depth of each slice, no matter where I slice it, is going to be H. Now, again, if you're at the college that I teach, um, they want you to write this in a Riemann sum before you write it in an integral. So you can say the force, total force, is approximately equal to the sum of I equals 1 to N of 60 times 5 times h sub i times delta h. h sub i is what's changing as the counter changes. These are constants. Delta h is the same no matter what. So the last thing I want to do is add the infinite sum. 60 times 5 is 300. And then I have h dh. So I have to think about my limits. So limits, these limits are the extremes of this value of H. So in other words, if I slice right at the top and measure the force, H is going to be zero. And if I measure all the way down to the bottom and measure force, H is going to be four. So there are my limits. Now this is a surprisingly easy integral to calculate. Um, let's, let's do it. So this is equal to 300 times H squared over two from zero to four. That gives me, let me scroll down a little bit here. This gives me 300 times 4 squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2. And many students, again, like leaving this bit out. Oh, it's 0 automatically. Watch out 
because you, you need to check it a little bit more carefully than being wispy because sometimes that turns out to be something other than zero. Especially if you're, if you're dealing with a, a trig function or an exponential function. So if I keep going here, I have 300 is 16 over 2, or six, I'm sorry, 300 times 16 over 2, which is 300 times 8, which is 2400. Now, always in the end, write down the unit of measure that you're going to end up with. But if you structure your problem this way, you're going to know right away what your unit of measure is. And it's right there. 2,400 pounds of fluid pressure. And that's extremely exciting.